Hello, hello, hello! Welcome everyone, it's your boy Mr. Degenerate back at it again for another motherfucking video and ooh wee! The Game Awards show has come and passed, so you know what that means? It's time to recap, it's time to give my whole opinion and see what I like, what I dislike, what I agreed with, and also just recap some of the announcements, some of the awards, and just have a good old time man. This, is, this video is gonna be long, so please Check the description box below. I left timestamps. And without further ado, let's just get into it. And the first thing I have to say is that I really enjoyed this Game Awards show. I thought this was a really dope Game Awards show. There were some interesting moments, but for the most part, it was a very, very dope announcement. And I think this year, what made this year special is because we all, we had, last year we didn't have the heavy hitters. This year we had two heavy hitters, and it was very exciting to find out who was going to take game of the year. But as I stated in my last video, it was pretty obvious who was going to take game of the year. So, without further ado, we're just going to go through all the nominees slash winners first. Then we're going to go and do all the announcements. So, let's get straight into this shit. So the first thing, we're going balls deep into this shit. Game of the year. Game of the year goes to Elden Ring. Now, I just want to personally say thank you, FromSoft, and uh, the team at FromSoft. Everybody who worked on this game, Miyazaki, everybody who worked on this beautiful game. Uh, I, I personally want to thank them. Uh, to me, this game is my, I would say, my first um, Dark Souls game or Souls game. And I appreciate that this game has come out and has touched me personally. This is a very touching game. It may not be my game of the year. I'm still debating on whether or not it's my game of the year personally. Um, but overall, I think this has been an amazing game. It was an amazing game and it was a well-deserved game. And I think the reason why this game won game of the year, and I think when you look at the categories it was going up against, all of these games has something unique but i think elden ring really stood the test of time because it it, it is a game that that rewards exploration in the truest form the game never holds your hand the game never punishes you for your discovery the game always offers you the freedom of choice i said this in my video my elden ring video which nobody fucking watched but i'm just gonna say it again in here the freedom of choice, the freedom of discovery, is why Elden Ring is the fucking shit. The simple fact that you could go anywhere on the map, the game does not tell you anything. The game does not tell you anything, but it, but respects you enough to say, have fun, figure it out, you can do it, is is, is a beautiful thing. Now, I want to talk to my to my my Sony fans, my, my God of War fans, because I know a lot of people was like, what the fuck? How did God of War lose to this shit? La 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 la, the combat's boring. There's not, there's problems with Elden Ring. Do not get it started, there's problems. However, God of War is an amazing game as well. However, it is a sequel. It just improves on the original format that they had, but it does not add, it doesn't redefine how gaming should be. When I think of game of the year, I think of a game that redefines how we see video games, retextualizes video games. You know, this is why the year when, uh, and I hate, I know people's gonna hate when I'm gonna use this game. Last of Us Part Two, that year it came out, I feel like that game redefined how video games are, are meant to be discussed and also talked about now granted i'm not saying it deserved game of the year i'm saying i could understand why it game game of the year and it was a no-brainer on why it won game of the year because it retextualized how story narrative games can go that it doesn't have to play it safe that they can be like movies where sometimes you're just gonna fucking disagree on say things same thing goes for it takes two it takes two one game of the, game of the year i think that game redefines what what it means to have story narrative games plus a fun, cool multiplayer type game. 
you know, that redefines those games. So again, when I look at God of War, it just improves on anything, everything it does, but it doesn't reinvent the wheel. Like the first game where it showed last year when it won game of the year, God of War showed that you can take an established uh, franchise, get video game franchise and breathe new life into it. If you're willing to do the time and work. So all this talk about fucking God of War got got snuffed. Motherfucker, you guys had six fucking awards. And we're going to get into the awards it won. And one of them I don't think it deserved. But you guys won awards. So calm the fuck down. It isn't that serious. And relax. Elden Ring took it. It's okay. It won six awards. Elden Ring is still MVP. The God of War's MVP. And that's it. And that's it. Moving on. Best game direction. Now, uh, Elden Ring won best game direction. I know a lot of people like get confused. I know one of my friends, he's like, it doesn't make sense how you can be game of the year and have best game direction. It seems like game direction is kind of uh, perfectless. Um, my humble opinion is that, yes, you can make the argument that probably game of the year and game direction is the same, but it's really not. For me, Game direction is how focused did you make your, did you execute your like vision of the game? If your vision was, well, well, for Elden Rings, for example, its vision is to have an open world Souls game. So how well did it execute that? How tightly focused it was? And I think Elden Ring succeeds on what it's trying to do. An open world Souls-like game where where you're going in this open world you don't know what the fuck is going on but you know you explore you find nookie crannies and whatnot and you go to different places but the game never tells you if you're supposed to be in that area or not you just figure it out on your own um and it does it pretty well now me personally do i think it deserves it i would still argue despite my issues near the end of the game where i think it's kind of its direction kind of falls short a little bit i would say elden ring definitely deserved it um very well so we're just gonna leave it at that ragnarok of course guys ragnarok wasn't one of when that i think ragnarok's um game direction i haven't beat it yet but its direction is strong but not as strong as elden ring i think its direction in terms of of again combat exploration and whatnot is pretty is good but in terms of i would argue in terms of like gameplay it doesn't redefine but it's good but it isn't like elden ring who's was taking a huge big risk best narrative god of war Based off of my, I want to say 30 plus hours with the game in terms of the narrative, while I do think there are, it has a little bit of patience, pace, eh, pay, pacing issues, God of War's narrative is so fucking strong. Just the story between Kratos and and atreus in this is so good because now atreus is a teenager so he's trying to make his own mark on the world but how he goes about it is completely like mm, it's no it's too naivety and kratos trying to guide him through that process and just look after atreus both of them in their own ways are trying to look after each other it's so beautiful. This story is so tight. And some of the, the, the side quests is so fucking great. Adds more to the world. But just everything about the storytelling in this game is by far amazing. Like, amazing. I, I don't know how it's going to end at the time of this recording. But my god, am I so excited to possibly beat this game, man. It is The story is so wellly tight. Um with a few minor problems but it's so good best art direction this one i kind of actually disagree with elden ring 
I think it should have gone to score. I've said it multiple times. I think score's art direction is pretty good. Uh, I think it's the only thing that score's got going for it. So to see it not win was kind of like, what? Uh, Elden Ring, I can possibly maybe understand due to the environments and different locales you go to, and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. But I, but if we're gonna go that route, we could have also given it to Forbidden West because I've seen, I've seen late game areas in Forbidden West, and it just looks fan fucking beautiful. So I don't know, but it got to Elden Ring. I probably would have gave it to Score. I, I was really rooting for Score to get it, but it is what it is. Best music. Now this one, this is why I said God Award didn't fucking deserve this. I would have gave it to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And I'm not saying that because, oh, I have my friends or Xenoblade fran fans and, and I want to please them. I don't honestly give a fuck. <laughs> I would give it to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 only because Xenoblade, to me, uh, going off of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I know it's going to have good, good music because the music in Xenoblade Chronicles has always been great, but I can, I can, I guess in some regard understand why God of War won, only because of a lot of the music in here has a lot of like chanting, a lot of like orchestra, but a lot of chanting, like like you you feel like you're about to go into a battle. Like you're about to go into a uh, 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 huge ass grand battle in the game. So it, it sounds good, but I just know, knowing me and knowing my experience with the Xenoblade Chronicles um, games, there's some music in in the in the first two games I hum e up to this day. Um, but yeah, Elden Ring music. I mean, God of War. Ragnarok music is good, like it's good, but I'm like, are, is this is gonna be music? I'm gonna hum. Is the question of the day. But I guess also when those quiet moments in the game of 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 Ragnarok, those soft when the music picks up, when those soft moments hit, those those quiet moments. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think it deserved best score. I would have gave it to um, gave it to Xenoblade. But I think I think also the reason why it didn't win, Xenoblade didn't win, is because Elden Ring. Um, I mean, not Elden Ring. I keep saying Elden Ring. Fuck, Ragnarok music is not it, it is not traditional at all. Uh, the way how it's music it is is not traditional at all <laughs> um, Xenoblade music is is typical anime music <laughs> no offense moving on best audio design this one I was like okay uh, I would have gave it to Gran Turismo but I could also see where why the audio design one because of like the combat when you hit somebody uh and the, the sound effects of like kratos um blades hitting onto something metal uh the sound effects when when you you do uh uh when you like pull somebody in half it sounds all great but i would have probably given it to gran, uh, gran turismo 7 but that's just me Moving on. Now this one. Mm-mm-mm. Best performance. Christopher Judge. The GOAT. Kratos. My boy. My boy. He fucking won an award. And if, if, if Sonny had won, I would have been happy as well. It didn't matter who won. But Kratos' actor winning was such a good thing. Although he went on like a 10, 8 to 10 minute speech. Uh, I was like, I don't know. This man had to vent. I know one of my, my, my homeboys. Um, 
Grayson, shout outs to him. Check out his YouTube channel. Uh, he he said a good point that you know we as men, especially as black men, uh, we be going through it. And I know for uh, for Christopher Judge, he's been going through it. He had surgery earlier in the year, which is why God of War got delayed. And he was really going through it, and so that eight to ten minute long rant was him basically letting everything out. And he wrote on Twitter, it was like, "Hey, I'm not. I wasn't even fucking done." And I was like, "Oh my goodness, my my guy. <laughs> oh my goodness." But I, I appreciate everything he does for Kratos, and I think the thing I love about his performance as Kratos is that we. And in, in the other games, you got to see Kratos vulnerable, and it was and it was like kind of touching. But you mo you mostly just pay attention to his his anger and his and his rage. And this one, the moments and, and again, I'm not I haven't beaten the game yet, but the moments where Kratos is just have a moment. Of reflection, a moment of of just opening his heart is so fucking beautiful, and it's maybe because of the music and everything. Christopher Judge kills it. There's one again. I, I say that one scene that sticks out to me. That scene where he talks to um, to uh, Freya about her son, and is and is like, you know, I don't regret my decision of killing your son because you was worth saving because you helped Atreus, my son. So I wasn't going to let you die. It was the loyalty shit. But I recognize that was not my decision to take your son away from you. That shit, that was your decision and I robbed you of it and I'm sorry. That scene is fucking beautiful. I was like, what the fuck? Kratos would have, old Kratos would have been like, no. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. Let me chop your head off. No, she's like, he's like, nah, son. It was my fault. And it's just so many moments like that in the game. There's so many beautiful moments of, of Kratos as a character. So I think this was a well-earned award. And I think everybody should give your man a, a round of applause. But next time, someone boot him off the stage. But nah, I... Man, men, men's mental health, everyone. We love you, bro. We love you. We're going to give you a hug next time we see you. Uh, games for Impact. Uh, this game is went to as Dust Falls. I have not played it. Congratulations, however. Um, I probably will not touch it. But congratulations. I guess Xbox got at least one game. Best ongoing Final Fantasy 14 online. I'm not surprised about this. I said it before and I'll say it again. If you actually pay attention to that community, they go hard as fuck. That game goes hard as fuck. So I'm not surprised Final Fantasy 15-1 um, or 14-1. Uh, best indie, I feel, and this is just my humble opinion you can all disagree i feel like sifu was snubbed uh shrey should have won only best new upcoming dubbed indie sifu should have won best indie if you understand what i just said like like i feel like the best indie should have went to sifu sifu is a fucking amazing game and, uh, and I really love it, but Shrey, I felt like, I, sh I feel like Shrey didn't really deserve it for this one. But I also understand it, it is a good game, but I, I just think Sifu is way better. Way better the more I thought about it. Uh, best, nobody gives a fuck about best, best mobile game, nobody cares. Uh, best community supports. Once again, Final Fantasy XIV. What can I say more? Like the developers actually listen to their community, 
and I and that game constantly gets patched, constantly adds new things, constantly uh, have very trans, very transparent with their fans. So it, it it goes to show you. I think this game also is a perfect example of just like No Man's Sky. I think this game is a perfect example of if you have a community that gives a fuck about your game. And if you work hard, even if you fuck up, you can redeem redeem it. You can redeem them. You can redeem again. Because I remember Final Fantasy IV, 14 was fucking horrible. But it, it, it did its shit. And I, I'm very proud of that. Innovation in accessibility. I would say God of War... Did not deserve it. I thought Last of Us Part 1 deserved it. Only because I feel like the accessibilities did more. But the more I thought about it. For a hack and slash. Or a, a fighting hack and slash. I don't know what you want to call it. An action adventure game. To have an accessibility option. That allows you to get into combat. I have to admit, I think that's kind of cool. Like, there's there's even, like, audio cues for when enemies are talking, hitting, gonna hit you off screen that you can just turn on in the accessibility option. And I think that's fucking dope. I, I think that's generally a dope thing. But I would have still given it to Last of Us Part 2. So, uh, Part 1, I, I can see why Ragnarok won, but I would have gave it to Last of Us Part, part 1. But, last, but... Ragnarok, I think the more I thought about it, I think really deserved it. Only because that accessibility option to just hear where enemies are, are gonna about to hit you, the the puzzles. Uh, there's moments where the game will actually tell you, move your stick in this direction, and it, it, it will actually assist you so much. So I'm impressed and congratulations. Uh Santa Monica Studio for looking out for us, uh, disability people. Uh, best ER, AR, most book two, never heard of it, don't give a fuck. Best action game goes to Bayonetta. I'm happy about this. Um, oh, I have not played Bayonetta 3 yet. I will be getting to it right after. Um, Right after I beat uh, God of War Ragnarok. However, you know, this was well deserved. I think it's Platinum Games. When Platinum Games actually fucking tries, I think Platinum Games is a fucking awesome developer. When they actually give a fuck and they actually try, I think they're the best. When they don't try, they get games like Legend of Korra and whatnot. So I'm happy they won Best Action Game because they. Because it seemed like for Bayonetta 3, they put their effort in. As much as I have issues with Kamiya, I think he's, I still think he's an amazing um, developer. I just would not want to meet him in, per in person. Me and him would be cursing each other out. Anywho, moving on. Best action adventure game. God of War, that was a no brainer. We don't need to talk about that. Combat's amazing. Puzzle solving and everything in that game is amazing. Traversal is pretty okay. Um, however, uh, the only negative I would say about it being an action adventure is the puzzles. While I think the puzzles are really good in the game, I hate how they give you the solution so, so fast. It's like, let me fucking, let me figure this shit out, please. Thank you. Anywho, best role playing game, Elden Ring. I know a lot of people was like upset at this, but I think it made sense the more and more you think about it. What is a role playing game? Somewhere is, is where you have stats, as when you have uh, where you're role playing, you're 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 becoming a character. You're you you're making an unidentified character and you're customizing it to your to your identity and what you want. Elden Ring does that for a T, a lot. You are a nobody in that game. 
and you have to earn to be a somebody in that game. So I think it I think it worked. I personally would have probably given it to um, Xenoblade 3. Uh, but Elden Ring just outshines all these games. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Best fighting game. Thank God Sifu didn't win. If Sifu won, I would have been fucking tight. Uh, but best fighting game goes to Multiverses. Um, I think it, I think it was well deserved. However, I probably would have given it to me personally. I love DNF Duel and it's getting update. Oh my goodness, we're gonna talk about that and probably another video. But it's getting update and I'm excited for that. So yeah. Uh, ooh. So Multiverses, congratulations. I thought they. They deserved it a lot. It's a fun game. Best family game? Kirby and Forgotten Land. Splatoon should have won, but whatever. That's cool. That's cool. At least Nintendo took home some some stuff. Uh, fucking Mario plus Rabbit. Spark Hope. Get this garbage shit out of my face. Fuck that. Best sports game? Slash Racing, Gran Turismo 7 is well deserved despite my issues with the DLC. Well deserved. Best multiplayer, Splatoon 3. That was dope. Man, Splatoon is a fucking dope ass game. If you ain't playing no Splatoon, you fucking garbage. I if you're not repping Splatoon, you're a loser, in my opinion. You a garbage. Best best content creator of the year um Lou Wink I've never watched his videos I probably have and I haven't realized it most of these nominations of people are people I don't even fucking watch um New Belblin I'm saying this right now then the more and more I thought about it as much as I would have loved him to win he's not a content creator sadly he's a bulletin board guy all right He's the bulletin board guy, and that's what it is. And uh, the only reason they gave him this reward, uh, they put him on here, is because he left Twitter. But And I appreciate his contributions to the gaming industry. But he's not a content creator. He's not making videos. He, he, he's not doing the stuff that I think he should have been doing, which is making videos, talking about news and shit. It would have really helped. It would have really helped. Uh, so... It is what it is. Uh, R.I.P. New bit. I know you're not dead, but you know your channel's dead. But it is what it is. Uh, best indie dub. I think it's Stray. Absolutely deserved it. It is such a sweet fucking game. It is such a cutesy goosey game. I fucking love it. I need to go back and actually beat it. I stopped, but it is such a cute game. So it was well deserved. Best adaptation, I was glad I chose League of Legends Arcane. It was a fucking amazing, amazing show. I cannot wait for season two. It was well deserved, and I think the reason why it was well deserved because it, it is the, not only because of its art style, but does a such a great way of introducing you to the world of League of Legends without having to do a bunch of homework and it is a great adaptation for that in fact for a lot of people this is their introductory uh, to some backstory for some of these characters and the simple fact that they thought of that was beautiful and I just loved it I think it's amazing shit most anticipated Legend of Zelda Tears of Kingdom. I think this game is gonna it, it, it's, it's definitely a definitely a game that people's been waiting for. I mean the first um, one was a great game, so I, I'm not I'm not surprised that people is excited for this. Me personally, I'm excited for Resident Evil 4. I think Resident Evil 4 is gonna be fucking cool. And then followed by Resident um, Final Fantasy 16. So we'll see. Uh, value it is best esports. Whatever. Uh, 
athlete, don't care. Best. Nobody cares about any other shit. Alright. Yeah, so overall, I'm satisfied with the game, uh, with the with the nominees. Everyone, everything that I wanted to win won. Like God of War got six awards. It took home the most awards. MV, MV, MVP. A lot of people say it swept. I don't know if swept is right, but I will say it was the MVP. So it doesn't matter. Um, and Elden Ring won Game of the Year. So either of the way, two of my favorite games of the year won big awards. And I'm satisfied with that. So that's it. So now we're going to move on to awards, uh, uh, announcements. So I'm looking forward to talk about that because there was a lot of cool announcements on this Game Awards show. A lot of cool. Okay, and so we are now going to talk about the announcements. There were a ton of announcements uh, for the Video Game Awards. And we're just going to go through them. Not all of them. We're only going to go through the ones that, to me, really stood out to me the most. So, yeah, let's just get straight into it. We're going to run through these fast. Final Fantasy 16. That's the first one right here, so we're just going to talk about it. I'm looking forward to playing this game. Again, it looks like Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry Fantasy. <laughs> or, or Final May Cry 16. It looks dope. I don't know what the fuck is going on in this story. So don't even ask me. But it looks sick. Uh, one of my biggest complaints was actually addressed in this trailer. Was that uh, it's, it doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy game. Because there's no party members. But... And this, it looks like there's actually going to be party members. It, they showed like a, a female and a dog as your companion. And I, I think another dude. And I'm just like, yes. Fuck yeah. So I'm like, okay, now you're starting to feel like a Final Fantasy. I, I can't wait to see the banter between them. I think the most thing I'm looking forward to this game is uh, the summon battles. Like they said that the summon battles are going to be epic. And based off of the trailer... They look like they're going to be epic. I think that's like their biggest focus is to summon battles. And those look great. Yeah. Because 15 had summons in the game. But the summons were barely... They were random. And they barely was like used. Except like the final, final um, battle. So I want to see them improve that. This game looks amazing. It's coming out, I believe... Um, uh, February, I mean, July the 22nd, if I'm like it. Oh, it's right here. Right here. My bad. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, Jenner, um, June, June 22nd, 2023. So, I'm looking forward to this game. Next, FromSoft came with that heat. They were like, we took game of the year. So, now it's time. It's time. It is time to do the big guns. It's time to do Armor Core 6. So new Armor Core is coming out. I'm extremely looking forward to this game. I feel like I have been converted into the FromSoft cult. I've now seen the light and I'm looking forward to this because I'm not even into mech games. In fact, I'm not even into mech stuff like that. I remember when I was a kid, I was huge into Gundam, but after that, I was just kind of like, whatever. Um, and I've never played an Armor Core game. However, it says FromSoft. So automatically, I gotta try it. Like, I feel like FromSoft has now gotten that reputation for me personally, where if their name is just on something, I'm gonna fucking play it. <laughs> it's just like one of those things that I know, it, it feels like how I feel about Naughty Dog. It's like, when Naughty Dog name pulls up on the screen, get excited because they're gonna come up with some crazy shit. And that's how I feel about FromSoft. Crazy shit's about to happen in this game. And so I'm looking forward to this. They did say um, this is going to be uh, more in line with the Armor Core game. So it's not going to be a, a, a Soulsborne type of game. Uh, which I'm looking forward to because one, I want them to not stick on the Souls formula 24-7. I want them to try new things. But more importantly... Uh, I was hearing rumblings through the community. It was a little 
bit of contention between the Souls fans and the Armor Core fans, whether or not this is a Souls game or are they borrowing elements from the souls they they already came out and said that they, that's not gonna happen this is going to be a brand new spent it's gonna feel like an armor core game but of course it's gonna have the 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 tightness and the fluidity of a souls game so i'm looking forward to that hades 2 every one of my friends lost their mind when we watched this shit uh, I was kind of shocked because uh, I know the first game was amazing. I never played it, but Hades 2 looks cool, so I might check it out. I wonder if you do need to play the first Hades in order to understand Hades 2, but or I'd probably just be like, fuck it, I'm just skipping it, but whatever. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying this bad boy out or looking into more detail. I'll probably play the first game just to try it out, see what it is. Uh, but yeah, everyone, I'm proud that they're making a sequel to it. Because I was shocked. I, I thought they weren't going to do a sequel. But it is what it is. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Levine's new game. Uh, that's been uh, hinted at and delayed multiple times. We've been hearing rumblings about this. If you don't know who Kevin, Kevin Levine is, he is the creator of Bioshock. And he finally announced his new game, Ju uh, Judas. And it's basically, how I looked at it, was it's basically Bioshock in space. Which is not a bad thing. Bioshock was really fucking dope. Um, and especially Infinite. I know a lot of people don't like um, Bioshock Infinite. I love Bioshock Infinite, and that's probably because it's my first Bioshock game. But I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, because I I do believe the Bioshock. If it's Henry Cavill, he's gonna make a good game. Like like Bioshock was a really cool ass game. So I think this is gonna be a dope one. I saw the gameplay. The gameplay just looks like Bioshock in space, but it was dope. I'm looking forward to it. And then the announcement that had me lose legit losing my mind. Death Stranding 2. Death Stranding 2 had me losing my shit. I felt like I was the only one in the fucking, uh, my friend group that was legit excited for Death Stranding uh, 2 because I really, really love Death Stranding 1. It's not perfect, and it's not gonna be a game for everyone. I, I fully recognize that. Um, but Death Stranding 1 was such a great, unique game because of the exploration in that game like the environment is your enemy and i love that i i i know a lot of people's like it's a walking package simulator shit but navigating that world is so fascinating so i can't wait to see what they do for death stranding 2 i know kojima's gonna gonna do some good shit um and trust me i i definitely understand especially if if any of my friends are watching this video, I completely understand if people don't like Death Stranding because it is an acquired taste. Um, it, it is a game that's not like Kojima's other work, so I, I gotta give him props on that. Um, and this is coming from someone who initially didn't like this fucking um, game because I, I just didn't get it. I, I, I didn't get it. Nothing made sense until you play it. Until you play it, I think everything makes sense in Death Stranding. Uh, I'm looking forward to this as well because there's the trailer that they showed had so left me with so many questions like they showed off uh, uh, Fragile from the first game and the first game spoilers like uh, because of how the climate change work if you get hit by rain you, uh, you You start aging up so I'm curious on how her skin is unaffected uh, how her skin got back normal like uh, they need to explain that shit like what happened that made fragile um now has her normal aging skin back like i'm, I'm very curious on that and also sam is old old man sam what the fuck happened uh I, what happened I, I'm very curious. I'm so many questions. I know I'm not gonna get the answer. I know I'm gonna need a breakdown video on somebody breaking down what the fuck happened. 
So I'm looking forward to this. I, I think this is going to be a dope ass uh, game. Uh, also, Kojima um, said that uh, the story uh, was completely changed because of the pandemic. So it's interesting, to say the least. Uh, he was tired of predicting the future, I guess, but whatever. Anywho, moving on, uh, Cyberpunk DLC, uh, Phantom Liberty is going to have uh, Aegis Elbra in the in the shit. Uh, I think that's cool. I'm still going to wait for Game of the Year edition for this game, so I don't have much to say on this. Cool that Aegis Elbra is in it, but I don't really care about Cyberpunk until the Game of the Year edition comes out. Um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is the sequel to Fallen Order, uh, where we coming back as our boy Kyle Kessinitz. My boy looks ripped. My son looks good. He got the scars on his face. I don't know if anybody saw the box cut, box cover, box art, but my man looks like he's seen some shit. Like he's done some shit. Um, he's gone through it. So I'm looking forward to this game so much because the first game was really good. I, I still prefer, I still prefer the, like, um, Force Unleashed. Uh, and there's still other better Star Wars games, in my humble opinion, but I really think Respawn's attempt with a Star Wars game has been really well. And in this game, it seems like you can now pick your own lightsaber style. So if you want to have cool lightsabers like star killer or uh ahsoka or star killer you can it seems like this game is gonna allow you to do that so i'm looking i'm looking forward to that a lot next but not least diablo diablo is coming soon june 6 2023 don't care about Diablo. It is what it is. Street Fighter 6. The realest game. The real game, bro. The real excitement is here, baby. Fucking coming out. Finally have a release date. June 2nd, 2023. Looking forward to this. They finally gave me my, my character. The most requested character for me. The character I've been dying for. The character I've been looking forward to, looking forward to for a long period of time, DJ. I've been dying to see DJ come back, re-envisioned, re-imagined. I cannot wait to see DJ. Uh, can't wait to play DJ. DJ looks sick as fuck. He almost reminds me of El Frete. Uh, as for the brand, the other brand new characters, uh, the other brand new characters look dope. But the one that stole my heart is Marissa. Marissa. Oh, Big Daddy. Big Big Mommy. Big Mommy. Oh, Big Mommy. Oh, choke me. Oh, pick me up and put me down. Oh, Big Daddy. She looking cute. She looking mad feisty. I love her fighting. Oh, I love how she hit. When she hit, she looked like she hit like a fucking prop. I want to play this character so bad. She's like my most most excited newcomer to play because he just looks sick we got fucking magneto in the game guys come on man you ain't you can't fuck with that you can't fuck with that uh suicide squad killed the justice lead um announced that batman will be in there of course because it's batman's part of the justice league but he will be voiced by the late and great kevin conroy and for those that don't know kevin conroy has recently passed so this is kind of like a big deal. This is his last performance. This is going to be his last hurrah as Batman. It is heartbreaking. It is sad. So this mean this game means a lot. It's going to mean a lot to a lot of us because this is Rocksteady last interpretation of Kevin Conroy's run as Batman. So a lot's riding on this. This game has a lot riding on it personally for me because Gotham Knights was wasn't didn't live up to his expectations, so I have faith in Rocksteady to deliver, and so it, it's kind of I know they got it, but it's gonna be sad to know that Kevin Conroy's last performance is this. Like that actually kind of broke my heart when I heard that. So, R.I.P. Kevin um, 
Kevin, you were the GOAT. You were the best. So we, we will miss you. All right. Moving along from all this stuff. Uh, Super Mario had a trailer. Tekken 8. Listen. Tekken 8. We got to talk more about this on another trailer uh, right now. We're we going we gonna to do a whole video on this because there's been a huge controversy between the Tekken community about aggressive play when we haven't even seen the actual matches or anything. Calm the fuck now, people. But whatever. We're going to talk more about it. But based off of what they show, this game looks fucking cool and impressive. Like, like they got my girl June back. And the first thing she needs to ask when she sees fucking uh, Jin is why the fuck did you start World War 3? Because Tekken 6 story makes no fucking sense. It's stupid. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be... It's gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing how she plays. They showed off Lars, um, Jack A, King, my man Paul, looking looking rugged. What's wrong? What's up? What's with these American fighters looking all rugged now? First we had Ken. Ken is a terrorist, and now Paul looking like a fucking hobo. What is it? What is this? What is this? What are they trying to say about Americans? Anywho, uh, the game looks amazing. It looks like they have destructible environment. And the coolest part, the thing that like had a big controversy is uh, it looks like the game allows FADC in the game. So I, I'm looking I'm looking forward to talking more about this. So we're going to save that for another time. Uh, there will be a link in the description when I do do that video. Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC and it's going to be exclusively for PS5 coming in April. I'm all cool with that. I think that's great. It looks like you're going to be going to um, Los Angeles. That's dope. That's cool. I didn't beat uh, Forbidden West so I probably might speed run it and just go and beat it. Um, haven't been really interesting in the the open world i think i really think elden ring spoiled me because i don't really care about the open world in horizon forbidden west i think it's very uh, and also i don't care about the characters except aloy but it's not enough to make me care so we'll we'll see uh crash team rumble at first, I got excited because I thought this was Crash, the the old Crash team, uh, Crash like party game that they that they had before. I used to love that party game. That people people talk about Mario Party. No, that was my Mario Party. That Mario Crash Crash Bash was my was my fucking shit. All right, but this ain't it. This is like a like a like slide dash uh, like. Like, just a silly, more, like, 4v4 uh, multiplayer-type game. I, I don't know how I feel about it. It, it, it. My excitement went from 100 to 0, so I, I don't know. I don't really... It ain't really picked my interest. Uh, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 looks incredible. It looks like Gears of War to me, so I'm looking forward to... To the game i'm looking forward to playing this this will probably be my first warhammer game i'm gonna play because it just looks like gears of war to me so i'm i'm looking to try this out it's gonna be also on the pc so we're gonna try it out uh if is if warhammer part of um activision because if it is i guess i get it for free on game pass but it is what it is then they showed off uh earth blade don't care about it looks okay but i don't care about it this had me excited as well bayonetta origins carissa and the lost demon instantly me and one of my homeboys we called it out we were like this shit looks like fucking okami i'm excited for this because i really enjoyed okami and so this is kind of like their way of like doing an okami type game so this is kind of cool I, I really enjoy i really enjoyed it i i have not played bayonetta 3 yet so i'm looking forward to seeing how this connects into bayonetta 3 
um, giving Bayonetta an origin, which well, she already has an origin, but giving her even more origin. Maybe they'll explain how she got the name Bayonetta. Maybe the other games explained it, but I can't remember. And it's funny because I, re I recently um, replayed all the games, but yeah, I don't recall them giving her the name Bayonetta. But yeah, like, I'm looking forward to this. This looks dope. I can't wait to play it. Next but not least, uh, Hellboy. Not much to say on it. Only thing I gotta say is that it looks cool because it actually is having the art style from the comic books. Other than that, I don't really have much to say. Uh, Crime Boss, uh, Rocky City is gonna have a bunch of celebrities such as Chuck Norris um, and Vanilla Ice. A bunch of other people don't care. Lords of the Fly, I mean, Lords of the Fallen. It's a reboot to Lords of the Fallen, the first Lords of the Fallen. Don't really personally care, so I'm not gonna even have much to say on that. Two announcements. We're gonna wrap. We're gonna we're gonna wrap these both up into both. There's the PC, a PC edition to both uh, Last of Us Part One and Returnal. They're both having their release dates. Um, Last of Us Part One is coming in uh, March. The third 2023 and then eternals is early 2023 i'm looking forward to both of them especially eternal i have not beaten them and i know they're gonna sell well so i'm looking forward to that because uh eternal i didn't play or beat because it was uh not on my radar at the time so I'm looking forward to playing it on a PC, 4K, 60 frames per second, baby! Ooh. Baby! Ooh, I'm looking forward to it. As for Last of Us Part 1, I'm looking forward to going back to this, uh, playing it on next gen. And also, uh, we got confirmation it's only going to be $49.99, so it's going to be even cheaper. So, I guess they listened to a lot of people's complaints of the ps uh the of the of the ps5 edition so this is why i say you better wait until pc edition baby it's gonna be cheaper but yeah like i'm looking forward to this i'm looking forward to playing both of these again and also i get to mod the fuck out of part part one uh what else what else in terms of trailer uh oh yeah i forgot i, I think i didn't mention it in, in the last part but somebody crashed the fucking some random kid just crashed the fucking game the fucking elden ring game of the war game of the year speech like some random kid just came up just talking about bill clinton it was like what the fuck it was the weirdest shit yeah it was like it was so weird also, Genshin Impact 1, Player's Voice. No one gives a fuck about Player's Voice. No, nobody gives a fuck. I, and I'm sorry if Sonic fans actually thought they were going to win. I'm sorry. No one gives a fuck about you guys. You guys are like us, uh, like abuse victims, all right? I don't I don't care about you guys. So you guys, y'all can relax. Baldur Gates 3, I uh, saw the trailer for it. Looks like Dragon Age. I, at first, I was like, "This is Dragon Age," but it, n then I remembered, like, no. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Bioware worked on Baldur's Gate one and two, so I want to try it out, but I don't know if I'm actually gonna try it. So I'll see. Also, there's a demo out for um, Forspoken. I have not played it yet at the time of this recording, but I will be checking it out. I really want to check it out. If I have a lot to say on it, I'll probably do a video on it. Uh, Transformers Reactivate. It's gonna be an online type of game. Look at fine. Look at cool. Um, I I want to see how it gameplay looks. If it's anything like Transformers War for Cybertron, it's probably gonna be dope. Um, Banish Ghost of New Eden. Uh, I don't know what the fuck this is. I saw the trailer and I barely remembered it. Um, but I'll, I'll get a good look at it another time, probably check it out, do see some interviews on it, I, eh, it is what it is, uh, what, I think that's really it, we're just gonna skim past all this stuff, 
um, Gearbox, Remnant 2, never played the first one. Blue Protocol was a game that's going to be uh, working with Amazon Games. It's an MMO, so I don't might not be playing that. Um, after After Us reminds me of Last of Us, whatever. Uh, replacement, I'm looking forward to playing this. I Hopefully it looks cool. Uh, hopefully it plays great. I think it's been constantly been shown on, on Xbox, so I'm looking forward to that. And then we got Survivor. We got other shit. I don't even fuck about any other stuff. And some of these stuff are coming to the to the PC. Only mobile. Oh, and Dead Cell is getting a Castlevania DLC. I will probably be checking that out. I am a huge Castle. I love Castlevania, especially since Castlevania the show uh, anime. So I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully, it's fucking dope. And then, oh, final thing I will say probably is the Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, it seems like it's gonna have DLC before the game's even out. That's fucking crazy to me, but whatever. However, the DLC will include the Three Houses characters, and it seems like you can use them as party members. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's cool. However, I am tired of game. Companies in general are announcing DLC before the fucking game is even out. Um, and that is it. That has to do with, with all the announcements I personally care about. Final thing I'll say about the about the award show, and then I'm gonna wrap up this video. I enjoyed this game award show. If I had to rate it a score, I honestly would give it a 8.5 out of 10. There wasn't a lot of dumb moments. There wasn't a lot of like annoying moments. There was that one funny moment near the end. And of course, Christopher Judge going on his rant. But other than all, I think pacing wise, it was great. I think a lot of, there was a lot of cool games announcement. I thought some of the awards, honestly, generally fair. And once again, give it up to Elden Ring for winning game of the year. And give it up to God of War for winning a shit ton of awards. So at the end of the day, I felt like everyone won. And if you are upset that your fucking game did not win game of the year or whatever, make it your own game of the year. No one cares. It's not that serious. It really is not that serious, guys. Like, again, just, just accept it. And actually go out and play these games that got nominated. And try them out. You might be actually surprised. Go out and try Elden Ring. If you didn't play it, try it. You might like it. But anywho, that's going to be it for my video. I hope you guys enjoy. If you are new to the channel, please comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'm sorry I kind of rushed this, but it is what it is. Until next time, guys, be safe. Have a good one.